In case you're just joining us, uh, the latest on Dallas, the shootings last night, five police officers killed, another seven wounded. Uh, there were uh, at least four gunmen we know of, uh, one who uh, was killed when a bomb detonated near him. The other three uh, suspects, suspects that is, have been taken into custody. They were triangulating on rooftops or in garage tops, and they were uh, firing down on police officers who were protecting a peaceful protest. Those protesting uh, were there because they uh, were upset about the deaths of uh, two African-American men, one in Baton Rouge and the other in Minnesota. Here to talk about it is Alex Del Carmen, Executive Director of the School of Criminology, Criminal Justice, and Strategic Studies at Tarleton State University in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. Good morning to you, Alex. Thanks for joining us. Good morning. Uh, Good morning. Your thoughts about this. You heard the, the police chief of Dallas speak earlier about what this uh, the one dead suspect told uh, uh, police officers. Uh, he wanted to kill uh, police officers. He wanted to kill white people. He was upset with the Black Lives Matter movement. What are your thoughts about that as you look forward to this? Well, you know, I think that what it shows is that people have a great deal of, of feelings and emotions, and they've reacted emotionally to the most recent shootings uh, initiated by police. And, um, and as a result of that, there are individuals, unfortunately, that are very ill, uh, that are mentally ill, and that will take this uh, matter into their own hands and, uh, and execute innocent uh, individuals that this, this person did yesterday with the five police officers that he killed. Um, this is this is a first in American history, at least in this in this manner in this form. We've not seen this before. Uh, what's different now about our society? What's different now about uh, about the crime circumstance, the policing of of America, than it has been in the last one hundred years? Well, I, I think for for starters, we have uh, an incredibly difficult uh, audience that has. Uh, meaning the public that has uh, different levels of expectations. And then in addition to that, you've got the usage of technology, which makes uh, as something as insignificant as a traffic stop go live on Facebook or perhaps, you know, Twitter um, and allows for the rest of the world to see. So police officers, I think, feel that uh, they are scrutinized, that they're under the microscope 24-7, um, which, which to some degree is good because it allows for us to see what they do. But on the other hand, uh, they feel sometimes that, as, as the FBI director has called it, uh, the Ferguson effect, which, uh, which has impacted the morale of police officers. Is there anything we can do to change this, uh, this perception of, uh, uh, of, of basically what seems to be a race war in this country? This, it seems like the beginning of that process, which is frightening to every one of us. Well, it's actually been going on for some time, but you're right in that now it's become more visible. Uh, and there are, you know, more acute uh, divisions of race and ethnicity throughout the United States. I think as, as far as what we can do, I think the media has a, a very significant role, which is to educate the public on the, on the good side of what law enforcement does. Um, and at the same time, for us to educate law enforcement as to the fact that we, we expect them to, to be protectors of our constitutional rights. And so, so it, is a, it is one of those things where it has to be done on both ends for people to finally regain the trust or perhaps gain the trust of law enforcement uh, as, as we ideally should have it. Yeah, we had uh, just a, a few minutes ago, uh, Alex, we had uh, manned, uh, uh, Craig uh, Floyd uh, from the National Law Enforcement Officers Memorial Fund on, and he was providing us with statistics uh, about the number of police officers in this country who will never pull their gun, who will never use their gun, the number uh, that, uh, the small number that have complaints filed against them. It, really, the percentages are small. And that's what we need to do. That's part of the education process that we're required, I think, as the media. You're absolutely right to provide to, to our listeners. Uh, help us do that, if you would. Sure. I mean, and I think that, that for starters, you know, the, the, most of the people in the United States ignore the fact that there are approximately one million police officers in the streets of America today. So if you think about it from the standpoint of, of proportionality and statistics, the actual number of police officers that even draw their guns or engage in a use of force incident is incredibly small. In addition to that, most of these law enforcement officers are decent, honest, hardworking people, but there are, sadly, just like every other organization in the world, there is a percentage of individuals that, that occupy the law enforcement uh, field, that wear a badge, that have a gun, that should have never become police officers. And so to some degree, those individuals, the bad apples, so to speak, are the ones that define the law enforcement career, and sadly, the media carries it and the public believes it. Right, without question. 
Hey, uh, Alex, thanks so much for carving out a couple minutes uh, of your time this morning. We know you're busy, and it's a very difficult day there in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. All right, that's uh, Alex Del Carmen, Executive Director of the School of Criminology at uh, Tarleton uh, State University in Dallas-Fort Worth.